Recently on Instagram, I asked you guys what questions you had for me. I said, the sky is the limit and you did not disappoint. <laughs> so let's get into it. Hi and welcome to The Wholeness Shift. My name is Veronica and if this is your first time here, welcome. I teach people about easy, practical spirituality and intentional living and all of the little things that you can do to make your life better and create the life of your dreams. I help people navigate their spiritual awakenings. So if these things interest you, hit the subscribe button below. I wouldn't want you to miss out on anything good. So like I said, today we're doing a Q&A with all of the questions that you guys sent me either in the comments or through messages or through emails. You guys all know how to find me. <laughs> so. I chose 10 of them because there were a lot and I did even include a few of the personal questions that I get and um, which I'm always like uh, let's just talk about spirit but <laughs> anyways I did include a few of the personal questions and um, several of more spirit based questions but before we dive into the questions I thought we could do a quick unboxing together Recently, Rose, the owner of Spiritual Goodies subscription boxes, reached out to me and asked if I would be willing to sample one of their monthly boxes. And I was like, of course. I'm always looking for good and cute little ways to get new things and to share them with you if I find them. So um, she shipped me a box. I think this is their August box. And um, so I did uh, cut the seal. To crack it open to for the sake of time but I have not dived into this so let's do that real quick and she's giving you ten dollars off of your first box if you choose to do this um, if you use the code wholeness 10 and I will put her website and everything else down below okay so let's get into this so I don't know if you can see here she included a card with her logo and the discount code and then there are some other flyers all oh, these are cute they're like journal stickers and I will put close-ups of all of this stuff um, I'll put close-ups of all of this I'll take pictures um, so there are journal stickers and then we have I don't have my glasses on so I'm flying blind here maybe not totally blind but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, looks like a necklace, a pretty little necklace. It says it's moon. I see the card says moon and I see a little moon pendant on there. So I will take a picture of this as well and insert that. Looks like a little coaster or something. Hang on. Mama got to put her glasses on. Got to put her eyeballs on. Um, okay. So it's the lunar cycle and it says, I feel, I act, I trust, I release, I see, I receive, I think, I set. And then this is something larger. It looks like it's probably a dream catcher or something. Oh, that's pretty. If you guys can see this. Lovely. Very pretty. So there's a, a card with a little affirmation in there. It says, the moon is powerful and connecting with her rhythm. I find wisdom and truth within myself. Love that. Okay, there are two more little things in here. Oh, how pretty. It's like a, a palm stone. It's selenite and it's a crescent moon and it's got a little notch like you would use like a, a palm stone or something nice and then there's a small little stone oh it's an opalite moonstone she pretty I'll take a picture of this too of course that's beautiful and that is right in alignment with a lot of things that things that have been happening in my life like I've been really drawn to opal I've been drawn to everything iridescent, opalescent. Um, I recently, not too long ago, a handful of months ago, met my 
one of my dragon guides who is opal colored and I've had dreams about this and so anyways this is right in alignment with stuff that's been happening to me and being drawn to me okay well that's it so just a quick easy little box to go through some cute little trinkets and um, if you guys are interested in receiving their signing up for their monthly boxes um, I will leave all the details below and don't forget to use the discount code and you can get ten dollars off of your first box number one this one just came in just now I just posted a TikTok um, discussing the women's rights issue that is happening in Texas Texas you can do so much better and um, so this one just came in literally minutes ago so I stuck it in here and took one of the other ones out number one they want to know what my stance is I think it was pretty clear from the video but what is your stance on the issues going on in Texas if you follow me on any form of social media you already know the patriarchy and yes I'm for women's rights and if you're not for women's rights maybe you should re-examine your heart <laughs> um, yeah I mean that about sums it up and I think that Texas or should I refer to it as Gilead um, should be pretty ashamed right now <laughs> boy we're starting off with a bang <laughs> okay number two I'm paraphrasing here I'm gonna read the question um, the gist of this is that this person's going through some tough circumstances how do I contact my spirit guides for help well first and foremost you need to remember that your guides are well aware of everything you're going through everything you're thinking everything you're feeling everything you've been through all the places that you are and everywhere you're heading towards everything you're going to be and everything you need to get there they know you don't have to do anything to get them to help you um, because they already are but with that being said if you just want to talk to them about it bounce ideas off of them have a discussion with them about it um, I would use a pendulum and I have an entire playlist on my channel about how to use a pendulum and everything you need to know about using a pendulum in case you've never had to do that so I'm not gonna dive into it again here because I've gone to it into it ad nauseum in other videos but um, I also have a video on rather benign ways that your spirit guides might be trying to contact you and that you can communicate to them such as dreams and everything else so I will link all of this down below and most importantly don't forget that if you are planning to use a pendulum or you're wanting to get communication from your guides you need to have those vibes up so if you have been going through some heavy stuff chances are your vibes might be kinda low and in that case you might not get good consistent trustworthy information that comes through your pendulum so just be careful number two I have asked to meet someone from my spiritual team through dreams or to have direct communication that I can't mistake but it hasn't happened why well some of that I just addressed in the previous question um, but there are a few reasons when you're talking about direct communication with your guides you may just be looking at it with unrealistic expectations of what that's going to look like if you think that they're going to show up as an apparition right before your eyes while you're sitting there on your couch and be like uh, Margaret I told you to do so and so <laughs> they're not going to do that so that video that I said I would link below talks about that I mean it might just be something as simple as you asking for a sign and like a dragonfly shows up or something like that you know it can be something that simple and if you're talking about in a dream you mentioned wanting to meet your guides in a dream same thing a lot of people when I say Spomi was in a dream with me or I saw Spomi in a dream and if you don't know Spomi is my main guide um, a lot of people think that they must be like glowing like a sunbeam or <laughs> they really stand out and that is not the case so early on after my awakening 
started, Spomi taught me how to recognize him in dreams. He would point out who he was in every dream, and before long, I could just start recognizing him. And what you need to look for is who is actually authentically present with you in that dream. You know, in dreams, there are often background players, people in the background, strangers that you don't have anything to do with, you're not really dealing with them, talking to them, they're just there. That's not your guides. Your guides will be whoever is there making eye contact with you, touching you, having a discussion with you, actually helping you. They may even be like across the room, but they're, they're watching you. You notice that this person is like watching you. That's your guide. And there might be more than one of them. Sometimes there's more than one of them in your dream. The one dealing with you the most is often your main guide, but you might have several guides that show up. But they're the people who are actually there dealing with you in the dream. Number three. I absolutely love your channel. Thank you. <laughs> and the way you articulate some very tough subjects. I know that you've said you've watched Initiation on Gaia with Matthias Stefano. Yes, I have. And it's awesome. If you've not checked it out, check it out. And can you elaborate on the information that he gives? It's very confusing and I'd love for you to break it down for me. Okay, girl, I wish. <laughs> so I, I want to do that. I do want to do that for you. The problem is that it is very deep, complex information. They're big topics. And so that takes a lot of brain power and a lot of time for me to like dive deep and really think about these things and articulate them and talk about ways to simplify them, if you will. My plate's just too full right now. That's just the bottom line. That's the honest answer. You know, I'm working full time as a nurse during the day and then at night I'm trying to do all of this and I'm a lone soldier here. <laughs> so I'm doing it all by myself. And to have that kind of time, I would be left with absolutely no time for my mental health or for anything else. So at this moment, I'm not going to commit to that. But I will say that it is on the list. It is on the to do list. I'm just not how sure. I'm just not sure how quickly I will get to it. Number four. As a gay guy, I'm really curious where spirit stands on homosexuality. Easy answer. Spirit has no issues with this. The only people who typically have issues with this is someone who was taught and raised in a toxic religious environment. It's all part of the patriarchy. There is nothing wrong with being gay. There is nothing wrong with homosexuality. You are worthy and you are whole exactly as you are. You are loved. Okay, here's a deep one. <laughs> Buckle up, buttercup. Okay, I'm not going to go too deep. Number five. Your children are all as gorgeous as you. Thank you. You look so young to have them. You mentioned leaving an abusive marriage. I'm trying to put all the pieces together. Was that your only marriage? How young were you when you started having kids? You want to know all the tea, don't you, boo? <laughs> oh, okay, I guess we're diving in, but not too deep. Just skimming the surface. And I tend to ramble when talking about myself because I don't like to talk about myself and it makes me nervous and so I tend to ramble. So I did write some points down that I want to follow so that I cover everything but I don't go too deep. But that, I, Anyways, you get it. Here we go. <laughs> I'm 48 years old. Courtney is 29. Darren is 28. Madeline is 24. Amelia is 21. I got married very, very young, way too young, to a boy from my youth group. Being part of a fundamentalist church and upbringing, um, this all had to do with purity culture. It was much more admirable to get married way too young and 
unprepared for life than to ruin your reputation and like make a mistake with a boy. So I got married when I was 17 years old, a month after I turned 17, and not because I needed to, just because I wanted to. And he was going into the army shortly after we graduated from high school that spring, or that summer. And so we wanted to have a few good months together before he left for the army. And so my parents agreed to let us get married. And so we did. So yeah, I got married in February of my senior year. So then after he finished up all his training with the army and whatnot, we moved to Fort Polk, Louisiana shortly before our first wedding anniversary. And then I am grateful for that experience because I got to meet one of my best friends on the planet. Her name is Maribel, and her husband was also at Fort Polk. And we lived right next to each other. And we have babies together. Courtney was born um, in Fort Polk right before I turned 19, like two weeks before I turned 19. And then we got restationed at Fort Hood, Texas. And Darren was born at Fort Hood, Texas, right after I turned 20. So yeah, back to back there. <laughs> and I used to say I loved Texas. I had a good experience in Texas. But Texas is back on some bullshit right now. So I'm not giving them any kudos. None. You get none, Texas. You are in the naughty seat. So... Go have a seat and be quiet. Shortly after Darren was born, he got out of the army and we moved back to Ohio. And because he was 21 now, he met up with all his boys from high school, didn't take long to find everybody, and they all started hanging out at the bar. And he basically never left. <laughs> and he also was partaking in some extracurricular activities at the bar and um, so anyways yes my husband started chronically cheating on me particularly with one female and so I divorced him and um, while in the church's eyes I had a biblical right to do this um, I was then branded with a scarlet letter in the church, basically. I was a complete outsider. I already was because I had some differing views than most people in the church. But now I really was because I was used goods. I was a divorced woman. I mean, it was just scandalous. I was no longer allowed to teach Sunday school. I mean, it was awful. Shortly after this, another guy from the youth group actually started wooing me and asked me to marry him. And I had said yes, but then I actually called off the engagement because he had shown himself to be abusive. And I was like, bye. But I was, we'll just say I was very, very pressured from my pastor to marry him anyways. It was like, oh, he'll change once you're married. He's just afraid of losing you. That's why he acts like that. Once he knows you're his, he'll calm down. So I went ahead with the marriage, and that started about a nice decade of abuse. Horrible abuse. And he actually ended up going to prison for quite a long time for the some of the abuse that he had bestowed. So I'm not going to go into details about that because... Um, yeah, that's a story for another day. But anyways, I gave birth to Madeline when I was 24, and I gave birth to Amelia when I was 27. And so that was a horrible marriage and relationship, but I did end up with two of my girls. So, And then once he had gone to prison, I very happily divorced him. <laughs> And that was one of the best days of my entire life. And I've never seen him again. Amen, amen, and amen. Number six. Would you be willing to do daily vlogs? 
I'd love to hang out with you and see what your day looks like. I think they will help me. I really like to see your morning routine and other ways that I can see how you incorporate spiritual stuff into your days. Well, yes, absolutely. If you've been watching for any period of time, you know that I have talked about this in the past and I had full intentions of doing that this year, but it just got away from me. How, how <laughs> is it September? How is it September? Is anybody with me? Just me? Seriously, I had so much to do this year and I had so many plans and you know, life happened, life happened and, you know, went through this continuation of this breakup. I had some family stuff happened. Um, it just life, life happened and this year has literally slipped away from me and out of my hands. So, I mean, it's not over yet. It's still possible. And the even more honest answer is that I was waiting to have the money to buy a the, the vlogging camera that I want um, because I would have to film it on my phone and vlogging takes a lot of footage and a lot of time and my phone fills up really quick. So if you would like to donate to the Get a Girl a Camera Fund, <laughs> the link is in my description box of every video of how you can donate to me or give me a little tip it's always so appreciated and usually goes to expenses related to this channel and right now I'm saving to get myself a new camera a mark three so because I, I need a flip-up screen I need something with more space yada 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 you get the point but yes it is on the to-do list and I would love to do that with you or for you and um, I'd like to start making that a regular part of this channel but a girl's got to get a camera and has to breathe, has to get, get her life in order. <laughs> Number seven, what are dreams? Are we in other dimensions? Do they teach us things? Are they real? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there, done. Go home. Video's over. Okay, it's my understanding that when we're dreaming, we are actually in the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is where, if you remember back to that video I made about the fourth dimension, I'll link to that below as well, where I was talking about my experience I had when I was on laughing gas, and then I gave a snip of um, Matthias Stefano on Gaia talking about the fourth dimension and what that looks like and how you can create all these possible timelines, right? So the fourth dimension is where any possibility is created. You know, if you want to play out the scenario of what a three-legged elephant would look like, that's where that scenario gets played out. So dreamland is in the fourth dimension. And so, yes, you are there. And they are just as real as this is real, as your physical, earthly life is real. Maybe even more so, because here on Earth... We have time here on earth. We have like a veil that comes over us, gives us amnesia. We don't remember all of the other aspects of everything. Um, so yeah, it might even be more real because anything can happen there. And um, what, what was the other question? Do they teach us things? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, they teach us all kinds of stuff there. They teach you, they work out trauma and old baggage. They they work through karma, they um, prepare you for upcoming stuff, all of it. If you've seen all my videos, you know that I've talked before about how they even taught me how to drive a stick shift. Spomi was with me in the car in the parking lot of the mall, the parking lot was empty in my dream, and he practiced with me and taught me how to drive a stick shift. And when I woke up, I knew how to drive the car from then on. <laughs> Number eight. I follow you on Instagram and you do a lot of jigsaw puzzles. Has this always been a hobby? P.S. I'm so glad you're on TikTok now. Even more content. Yay. <laughs> yes, I'm glad I'm on there too. I'm, I'm going to get the swing of it and like jump in there. I have a whole list of ideas. It's just a matter of actually doing it and actually having like 
my hair done and not looking like I just rolled out of bed most times so that I can film a little. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I do a lot of puzzles. Uh, yes, I've always had this habit. My mom was a puzzle doer. And um, the thing is that I have several hobbies. Like, I needlepoint and cross stitch. I do other crafty things. I do jigsaw puzzles. I read. Um, there's just, there's a lot of different hobbies I have. And the thing is that I go full steam. I binge on that hobby till I'm saturated in it. I've had enough. And then I move on to something else. So it's kind of a rotation. Like I will do puzzles for a handful of months and then I'll get kind of burnt out on them, put them away for a few years. And like in a year or two, the puzzles will come back out. But yeah, it's just their turn right now. I've had a lot going on in my life lately. Um, you know, as I've talked about in other videos, Fred and I recently broke up, like broke up, broke up. And I've been trying to distance from him. And that is so hard for me and quite emotional. So I have a lot going on in my mind there. And then I have a whole house full of people. It's normally just me here occasionally me and Amelia, but usually just me. And now I have a whole house full of people. <laughs> I have um, my daughter and my son-in-law are staying here temporarily until they close on their new house. They have two cats with them. My daughter Amelia is here because she broke up with her boyfriend and moved home. And so she has her dog Rusty here. And so I have three adults and three pets that have now joined me. And while most of the time, it's so awesome. I love every bit of it. And it has been so nice to have my curls home. Oh, that makes me so emotional. It as an empty nester, I'm sure you can appreciate that when you get to spend a little bit of time with your little ducks, <laughs> with your babies, that it's just precious. And I know that I'll, there will probably There will probably never be another point in my life. I know that um, there will probably never be another point in my life that I get to spend time with them like this again. So I am loving it. I'm loving it so much and I'm in no hurry for it to end. But with that being said, as an introvert, it can be a lot to have people in your space all the time. So doing the puzzles has been an escape for me. It's been a way to quiet my mind and distract myself from wanting to pick up the phone and FaceTime Fred or um, go eat my weight in chocolate. <laughs> stuff like that. So anyways, the puzzles have been a good escape for me and they've been the healthiest coping mechanism that I have found in this very moment. That's the T. Number nine, do you ever plan to do in-person events? Oh yeah, I would love to. Right now with this pandemic levado that we're we're living through um, that would be kind of tough to accomplish so several of you have requested like zoom meetings or something I have considered that so if you would be interested in zoom meetings or like paying for a little zoom retreat or a one-on-one -on -one thing like let me know because I would be willing to do that um, eventually if life returns to normal at any time in the near future, yeah, I would love to like host a weekend retreat or something like that or classes. Yeah, I would love to connect with you guys and and learn from you and teach you and just vibe with you. That would be awesome. So, um, but currently in this moment, the only thing I have to offer you are coaching sessions um, because time is so tight and short and you know, it is what it is and that is all I have to offer right now. So 
a lot of you lately have been taking advantage of coaching sessions with me and booking some time. They have been amazing. I've had some really amazing coaching sessions lately. The most recent one I did was with Alicia. Shout out to you. And I hope you're enjoying your vacation and I hope you're doing well. I've been sending you love and light ever since we closed out our call. And um, so if you are interested in getting my advice, helping me brain, having me to help you brainstorm, help me to help, help you, f words are hard. It's Friday. I can't talk. Sorry. Words are hard. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you would like me to help you, <laughs> I have to talk slow or else it won't come out. Um, figure out like a routine or to help you see your blind spots. What are you missing? Help you figure something out. Help you nail down meditation, pendulum use, whatever. So if this is something that interests you, head on over to my website and book some time with me. Schedule some time. I would love to talk to you. And I will leave the link to that in the description box as well. And I'm thinking around the first of the year, the prices might be going up a little bit because my time is usually in pretty short demand. And so um, take advantage of the prices where they are while they are. Advice from me to you. If this is something you've been thinking about doing, dive in. Wait, was that only number nine? I thought we had 10. I thought we had 10. We did have 10. I just had them misnumbered on my paper. So anyways, that was 10 things. I'll try to label them properly during the video, but that was 10 things and um, I hope that that helped. I hope that answered some questions and I would be happy to answer any questions that you have about me or about spirituality, just send them to me. You know how to get them to me. You know how to get in contact with me. I'd love to hear from you and I can't wait to talk again. Until next time.